feline friends and welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to talk about how we groom our Russian Blue Spike. And I'll be talking about four things in particular. The first is how we brush his fur. The second is how we brush his teeth. The third is how we bathe him on occasion. And the fourth is how we cut his nails. As I've mentioned in previous videos, Spike is a very, very hyper cat. So we've had to do a bit of trial and error in order to figure out the best ways we can approach him and get these things done. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, y'all. So here you can see I've laid out all of the materials we use to groom Spike. So first I'm going to show you how we brush his fur. We use two items. One is a cell moon silicone brush, which Spike absolutely loves, and the other is just a toothbrush. So we use the cell moon brush to groom Spike's longer hairs on his body. And I decided to get this silicone brush over other bristled and metal brushes because I heard it's very effective at pulling loose fur. But every cat has their preference, so I'd recommend trying a few different types if your cat doesn't like one particular kind of brush. Russian Blues actually don't shed as much as other cats, but we do groom Spike once a day to keep his coat healthy and shiny. And then we use the toothbrush to groom his shorter hairs around his face and neck, which are harder to grasp with the Cell Moon brush. Spike also really likes being groomed with this toothbrush, but we just have to catch him when he's on the sleepier side to do this, otherwise he starts to bite the brush because he thinks it's a toy. I'm just using a standard human toothbrush. Um, a few months ago, I bought a pack of bamboo brushes for myself, and I just set one aside to groom Spike's face. So you can really use any old brush you have laying around. I'll put this one in the description below. I do find it's fairly good at picking up loose hairs. Okay, now moving on to brushing teeth. We currently use the vet-recommended Verbac CET enzymatic toothpaste, which comes in poultry flavor to make the process easier. And then we also use a 360 degree head silicone toothbrush, which we've also been liking so far. As I've mentioned before, Spike is very finicky when it comes to brushing his teeth. But this is why I really like the 360 degree head, because I can just spread the toothpaste all over and that way while Spike tries to bite the brush and look off what he thinks is poultry, I can just gently pull and twirl the brush around so that I can at least get the toothpaste rubbed on his teeth this way. Sometimes I do have to play a bit of tug of war with him because he will literally try to swallow the head of the brush, but all in all, it gets the job done. And we try to brush his teeth every three to four days. All right, now moving on to bathing. To bathe Spike, we only use two things. One is a pet safe shampoo and the other is some old towels. Hey everyone, because Spike actually hates being bathed, I didn't want to put him through the torture of doing a demo bath just for the sake of this video. So I'm in my bathroom right now and I'm just going to talk you through how we would bathe him uh, if we were to. And I just want to emphasize the fact that we don't bathe him frequently. You're actually not supposed to bathe your cat frequently because they can strip away all of the essential oils that makes their coat healthy. Actually, we've only bathed him once since we've gotten him and the only reason we did was because he was teething. I think I mentioned this briefly in another video, but when cats teeth, their breath is absolutely awful. This is one thing that I didn't read online um, and didn't really anticipate before we got Spike. So just forewarning y'all, your cat will start teething around four to six months and around that time their breath will really stink. Because his breath stank, of course, whenever he groomed himself, his fur would smell like his breath. Uh, so around the time that his teething uh, was done, we decided to give him a bath. So we just use this JP Pet Shampoo here. Um, it's supposed to be very gentle. It's made for pets, of course. Um, and then we just keep it handy in case Spike ever does need another bath. Uh, we probably won't bathe him unless he, I don't know, steps in his pee or somehow gets really dirty. What we did with Spike, again, because he hated being in the tub, is we would just take a bunch of towels um, and then we would soak one of the towels in water and then we would kind of rub Spike with the wet towel until his fur was nice and prepped for the shampoo. 
and then we would take the same damp towel, run it underwater again, and then we would put the shampoo on, um, kind of lather it up, and then we would lather up Spike, just like on the bathroom floor. Uh, he hates sitting in the tub, so um, we just do it wherever he is in the bathroom and kind of just make sure the door's closed so he doesn't run out. And then once he's all lathered up, we um, of course then bring him to the tub because that at that point we do have to rinse him. Uh, so one of us will hold Spike and then the other one of us will um, pour, uh, put the shower head um, over his fur so that all the soap is rinsed out. And then finally, once the soap is rinsed out, of course, you want to dry your cat, so we just take a brand new towel. Um, I don't know why I'm waving this around as if I'm showing you guys something substantial. But anyway, we just take the towel and then just rub him dry. Um, we do uh, try to blow dry him too, but it seems like he's kind of scared of the blow drying noise. So if it's warm enough, we'll just let him air dry for a bit after we towel him down. And yeah, that's basically it. And finally, nail cutting. To cut your cat's nails, you want to make sure you buy a pet-specific nail cutter because the shape of human nail cutters are not meant for cats and it will end up splitting your cat's nails. So we cut Spike's nails every week. Most of the time, I can get it done myself. I just have to catch him when he's sleepy, otherwise he wants no part of this. This week, I couldn't catch him at a good time, so I had my partner help me by holding him up so I could get these little guys trimmed. And as you can see here, it was still kind of a battle. Sometimes my partner has to distract Spike so that he doesn't keep attacking the nail cutters. But once you have your cat in ideal position, you want to gently squeeze the paw so that the nail shows. And then once the nail comes out, you want to trim off the translucent part. If you cut into the part of the nail that's pink, that will make your cat bleed. So make sure you pay close attention to the color of the nail. And that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. And as always, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns down below. Look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Take care all. Bye.